From horrifying killers and demonic possessions, evil seems to have a lot to say. Hey Top 10 fam, my name is Rachel Fisher and let's do this Top 10 list of terrifying messages sent straight from hell. Let's go. Number 10, Dance with the Devil. Actions speak louder than words, and according to this bit of French Canadian folklore, Rose La Tulipe got the message loud and clear. Rose was a young, vivacious girl who loved to dance, and on the eve of Lent, she begged her father to host a dance. Her father said yes on one condition that the revelry would cease at midnight to respect the holiday. Indulgence, even dancing, wasn't allowed during Lent. The night came, and Rose danced with everyone despite the fact that she was engaged to a quiet, shy man off in the corner. At 11pm though, there was a knock at the door. A dazzling stranger, tall, dark and handsome, entered the room. He was welcomed in but refused to remove his hat, gloves and jacket as his visit would be short. But the man spotted Rose and immediately swept her across the floor. Rose was transfixed but soon midnight came and as the rest of the guests stopped, the man whispered in her ear, just one last dance my rose. With struggle she resisted, but suddenly her feet were bewitched and it seemed they began dancing without her. She couldn't control it. The man then kissed her and the spark from their kiss set the house ablaze. The next morning Rose was found mumbling around the ashes, now mysteriously an old woman, the devil having taken part of her soul. Some say he took her back to be his bride, either way the message is clear, there is a steep price for dancing with the devil. Number 9. Letters from Jack The crimes of Jack the Ripper continue to haunt cold case enthusiasts to this day. The messages are so horrific it's clear where they must have come from. Right? They came from someone so evil that hell itself must have spat him back out. Jack the Ripper took the lives of five women in Whitechapel, London in the year 1888, and he loved the publicity. He taunted police with mysterious letters, one specifically addressed from hell. You see where I'm going with this? To a man named George Lusk on October 16th. With a letter, he received a parcel with half a kidney and a letter that read, from hell, Mr. Lusk, sore, I send you half the kidney I took from one woman and preserved it for you tother piece I fried and ate, it was very nice. I may send you the bloody knife that took it out if you only wait a while longer. This letter was also really scribbly and strange so the letter wasn't quite clear. Signed, catch me when you can Mr. Lusk. This horrific letter is just one of the messages that taunted police and with no man to attach it to, perhaps it is indeed from hell. Number 8. So -so. Reason number 12,345 as to why Ouija boards might be a bad thing to whip out at a party. So -so. I've never had a terrifying ghostly experience in my life, but everyone I've talked to who has used a Ouija board has regretted it. Zozo seems to be a name most people hear and they have some creepy things to say. Legends of Zozo first appeared in 1816 as the name of a demon who possessed a girl in Picardy, France. Then in the 20th century, Zozo has appeared disguised most often as a friendly ghost, but get on their bad side and they will spout nasty curses at you. Sometimes their curses end up injuring individuals in reality or bring users close to deadly accidents. Whatever you hear, whatever they say, it is clear that whatever it is, its messages come from some place no one wants wants to visit. How are you doing down there? Number 7. Sister Maria On August 11th, 1676, Sister Maria was found lying on the floor of her cell covered in ink with a note in her hand. The note was incomprehensible, covered in indistinguishable symbols and letters. Sister Maria said that the letter was written by the devil himself. He was trying to force her away from God. The letter fascinated researchers for centuries and some believe they have deciphered it. It appears to have been written in shorthand according to Ludum director Danielle Abate. She says, and I quote, we speculated that Sister Maria created a new vocabulary using ancient alphabets that she may have known. Unquote. By locating vowels and letters she used from different languages, they were able to decipher the message the devil the devil sent her. The letter apparently describes the Holy Trinity as dead weights and says, and I quote, God thinks he can free mortals, the system works for no one, perhaps now, Styx is certain. Unquote. Abate says that the sister might have suffered from schizophrenia or bipolar, so that could be another explanation, but the research is yet to be published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, so we will have to wait a little longer for whatever truth is present. Number 6. I am Lucifer. After 60,000 exorcisms, Father Gabriel Amorth 
finally met the man of the hour. Before his death in 2016, Amorth was the official exorcist for the Diocese of Rome. But out of all the cases that came to him, this was the one that haunted him the most. A young man came to visit him in 1997 requesting the help of Christ. As soon as he was escorted into the room, he began to uncontrollably spit and curse in English, a language he wasn't known to speak. Drool dripped from his mouth and he stared down the father before he tried to attack him. With prayers, he held him at bay. He called out, unclean spirit, whoever you are and all your companions who possess this servant of God, I command you, tell me your name, the day and the hour of your damnation." Unquote. That's when things got scary. The man simply snarled, I am. Lucifer. Amorth said that the windows frosted up as he tried to remove the demon and the man howled for 25 minutes straight and hovered three feet in the air. Number 5. Death Angel Will Carroll is the drummer of the band Death Angel and was one of many who caught COVID this year. In no way did he have it easy as it many, as he had a long, hard, relentless battle with the virus, including a near-death experience. While in a critical state at the hospital, Carol was unconscious for 12 days straight, but little did anyone know, he was far from sleeping. In an interview with San Francisco Chronicle, Carol relayed the vicious nightmares he had. The star feature was the devil, punishing him for his sin of sloth. He would turn him into a bulbous creature and make him puke blood until his heart gave out. Then it would start again. Carol has since recovered from the virus, but took the message he received from the devil to heart. He needed to change his lifestyle habits or else. When he came out of it 12 days later, Carol felt like he pulled a Dean Winchester and returned from hell. And if there's one thing he will make damn sure of is that he's never going back. Number 4. The Flying Canoe This is another French Canadian urban legend that involves another deal with the devil. In the version told today, French traders made a deal with the devil to make it so that their canoe could fly. The devil agreed, but of course nothing comes without a cost. The devil said that they had to return the canoe by dawn, and should they say God's name or touch any holy objects, their souls were his. The men agreed, but it was only a matter of time until the devil's old tricks came into play. On New Year's Eve, it snowed so hard and the men missed their women, so they hopped into the canoe to see them. They drank and partied, but as dawn approached, the men found one of their own drunk as a skunk underneath a table. They bound him so he wouldn't utter a word of God mistakenly when he woke up, but unfortunately that's exactly what he did. He managed to loosen the gag and said, Mon Dieu, why have you tied me up? The canoe then took a nosedive and the men tumbled into darkness, never to be seen again. The message? A deal with the devil is always a fool's bargain. Number 3. The Breath of Satan Malachi Martin released his vows as a Jesuit priest in the 1960s because, and I quote, he was prompted by his conclusion that many in the church, and particularly in his own order, the Jesuits, were more interested in power than in saving souls. But he still wanted to put his skills to good use. Martin, also known as the Coke Harry Priest, went on to perform intense exorcisms, and according to him, quote, Exorcism can be extremely violent. I have seen objects hurled around rooms by the powers of evil. I have smelt the breath of Satan and heard the demons' voices, cold, scratchy, dead voices carrying messages of hatred. Martin is the main subject of the documentary Hostage to the Devil on Netflix and revolves around a spirit he confronted, a spirit that might have been the devil himself. Number 2. Michael Taylor Whether it was disease that possessed Michael Taylor or an actual demon, he certainly delivered a message loud and clear, and it wasn't from anywhere good. Taylor was a simple butcher living in Osset, England who claimed to have been possessed by some dark entity. Everyone who knew him said he was very kind, but knew something was wrong. After a fight with his wife, he decided he needed to undergo a series of exorcisms. On October 5th to 6th in 1974, Taylor underwent an exorcism that took 24 hours where apparently the priest cast out over 40 demons, but unfortunately there were three left and they were not good. Taylor went home with three demons who remained and viciously took the life of his wife. When they found him, he was covered in blood, standing in the street, screaming in a voice far from his own, it is the blood of Satan. What this message means on a larger scale we may never know, but one thing is for sure, it came from a place of pure evil. Number 1. Annalise Michel the case of Annalise Michel was so terrifying that it inspired the exorcism of Emily Rose. The actual exorcism remains controversial, as it is very likely Annalise Michel was suffering from a mental illness like schizophrenia, and doctors lacked the skills to treat her effectively at the time. And she did have a history of mental illness, but none of the medication that she was given was responsive for her. So many people believe that she was, in fact, 
possess. The biggest examples are the tapes left behind during the exorcisms where a voice that didn't belong to Michelle dark disturbing messages. On top of that, she spurned religious objects specifically. Two local priests performed 67 exorcisms and 43 cassette tapes recorded outrageous things including statements from Lucifer himself such as, quote, I want to conquer the earth for myself, in the meantime I make a rich booty, I am filling up my kingdom, I take whatever I can, I must convince you of this, and I took Judas with me, he is always at my service, he is damned. And lastly, the enemies of the church belong to us." Unquote. Either way, whatever you believe, she said these things with such conviction, it's hard to ignore the chill up your spine. And that was our video of messages from the underworld. Let us know if you like this video by liking, subscribing, and commenting what you want to see next. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher, and until next time, guys, take care. Mm -hmm.